Hello everyone, I'm Robin Pearson, and I'm here to show you what remains of the Aqueduct of Valence in Istanbul. Constantinople stood as the Roman imperial capital for over a thousand years. Many enemies tried to capture the city, but failed. Its position, surrounded on three sides by water, made it highly defensible. But there's a reason that no one in the ancient world before Constantine decided to set up their capital here. The city was very short of water. Only one river flowed in the vicinity, the Lycus, a shallow stream that often ran dry in summer. And there was a lack of natural springs. A small population could live here comfortably, but once Constantine made it his capital, the demand for water increased exponentially. Byzantine historians tell us that during the reign of his son, Constantius II, the city was dying of thirst. The Emperor Hadrian had already built an aqueduct in the 2nd century, which brought water from north of the city, but this was clearly not enough for an imperial capital. So Constantius drew up plans to attach the city to a more plentiful source of water, some 120 kilometres, 75 miles away, in the mountains of Thrace. This was a grandiose scheme, and it was only finished under Constantius's successor, the Emperor Valens. More than 30 stone bridges and hundreds of kilometres of underground tunnels carried the water across the Thracian hills and plains. The aqueduct of Valens was two and a half times the length of any other Roman aqueduct, and the final result was a tremendous demonstration of imperial power, commanding the elements themselves to obey. The whole project has been called one of the most outstanding surveying achievements of any pre-industrial society. From the late 360s AD, the water began to flow, and enabled the population of Constantinople to soar into the hundreds of thousands by the mid-6th century. At that point, close to half a million cubic metres of water reached the city every day. Scholars believe the water channel entered the city under the land walls around the gate of Adrianople, modern Edirne Capi, before being siphoned off into three open reservoirs and dozens of underground cisterns. In 626 AD, the Avars besieged Constantinople and cut off the aqueduct. By this point, war and plague had reduced the population considerably. Those that remained were able to sustain themselves from Hadrian's water channel until the aqueduct of Valens was reconnected in 758 AD. The population of Constantinople slowly began to flourish again until the Crusader sack of 1204. By that point, the aqueduct had again ceased to function and lay dormant for several centuries. It was only with the coming of the Ottomans in the 15th century that parts of the Valens system were again brought back into use. Aqueducts have to be carefully built with a very gentle and consistent gradient to keep the water flowing, but to stop it from moving too fast. Roman engineers therefore chose the smoothest path they could through the landscape of Thrace. For most of its journey to the city, the aqueduct's water channel was close to the ground or under it. It was only when sudden dips couldn't be avoided that these distinctive bridges had to be built. Constantinople's seven hills presented an interesting challenge to Valens's engineers. They were able to avoid huge drops across most of the capital, except for this spot between the third and fourth hills. These huge arches had to be built to keep the water flow constant, and they have remained a dramatic part of the landscape ever since. 971 metres of the aqueduct have remained in modern Istanbul and have been cleverly incorporated into the road network. In part, this is because the Ottomans repaired the aqueduct and used parts of it in their water supply. So of the 51 largest arches remaining, 10 are largely of Ottoman construction.
This bridge of arches reaches up to 28 metres in height and is 5.5 metres thick. To give you an idea of the gradient, the first arch that survives in the west of the city is at an elevation of 57.074 metres, while arch number 76, some 800 metres to the east, has dipped only to 56.248 metres. The last major repairs were undertaken in 1697, though parts of the aqueduct were apparently still in use in the 1800s. The aqueduct is of course free to visit. You can follow it up the hill in either direction, or just have a drink under one of the arches. The ruins of the Church of Polyuctus are nearby, if you'd like to see them. And when you visit the Istanbul Archaeological Museum, you can also see some pieces of the water system up close. For intrepid travellers, there are parts of the aqueduct system dotted around the Turkish countryside, though you may need expert advice to find them. If you'd like more detailed information about the aqueduct of Valens, then visit thebyzantinelegacy.com. It's a fantastic website providing breakdowns of the Byzantine buildings that can still be seen today, and there you'll find most of the still images and sketches used in these videos. If you'd like to watch my video about the Church of Polyuctus, then click here.